morning. Nice to see that you are awake. Welcome in July. The half of the year we have gone through it and God has been graceful and merciful to us that we are now in the seventh month. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this new day. Thank you, Lord, that you have brought us so far. Thank you, Lord, that you care. Thank you, Lord, that you carry us. As we, I stand here, Lord, I pray that you speak through me. Uh, divide your word according to everyone the way you want to give it to us. Let no one go out here without getting his own word, how you want to, to communicate it, Father. It is your turn. Back your word. Speak your word. And I'm your vessel in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Today I want to talk, uh, to speak about uh, uh, separation. It is something that I've been having the, the last two weeks. I, I can't tell exactly what God wants from me, what should I separate myself from. But uh, as I was preparing myself, I had to know what is separation, biblical element. This is a, a, a setting apart, separation is at the heart of the biblical idea of holiness, God is separate from his cre uh, creation, has set apart his people from the world. Sin causes separation between God and humanity, making necessary the, the work of Jesus to be seen if we separate ourselves from the world. The end of the age will be bring the final separation between the righteous and the wicked. Separation. We can read it in uh, Deuteronomy 7, 6. Deuteronomy 7, 6. It is written, that is uh, NIV. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured uh, person. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be me. It will be for me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. There are the words you are to speak to Israel. So God says, if we obey, he separated us from the world. He separated us from everything that we used to be. The day you say to Jesus, uh, you took Jesus as your personal savior. That is the day we separated ourselves from the past. And um, separation, God is calling us to separate us from everything that is not of him. If we say we belong to Jesus and we still do the things we used to do before, that is not separation. That is just walking into a different world the good one and the bad one, but you have to decide. Separation is a decision we make to say, I don't want to do this very thing anymore. I don't want to go the way I used to go. Um, separation is very important to be, um, to recognize who God is. If I still do the same thing like the way I used to do, then I will not see God in everything that I'm doing. I will just, take it for granted when something happens. But if I separate myself from everything that is not of God and I follow God this way, I will see God's hand in everything I'm doing. Um, biblical separation refers to separating ourselves from the sinful things of the world. We can see today what is right in the world we know it is not the right way how we have to live in the good way. Separation is not fellowshipping or having those uh, connection with immun ungodly people or anything that is not from God. You know what is really right. I know exactly what is really right. But there's uh, some certain things which we do and we feel like, hmm, it's not too bad. Everyone is doing the same, but you are not the same because in uh, Deuteronomy, God separated us. We are a treasure to him. 
You cannot be a treasure and you can uh, then you walk in sin. It, it doesn't work like that. So, uh, separation is avoiding anything that will make you appear to be involved in or approve any immoral and or ungodly activity. So if we, we say we separate ourselves from anything that is convicting us that what we are doing is not right, so is to avoid it. If you say this is not right, then avoid it. Don't go there. Don't do it. Uh, we can see that uh, God said to Abraham, just move from your father's house and go to the place that I will show you. Abraham just moved on. He didn't know exactly where he was going, but he was separated from the uh, activities what his family was doing. They were uh, worship, worshiping idols, but God had a plan with, uh, to do with uh, Abraham. He just separated him to say, be on this side. And if Abraham was just, uh, today is here and tomorrow is there, we couldn't be talking about him because he would be fallen already. But God separated him from his family and said, go on that side where I'm going to show you. Um, we see what separation has done in different lives of people, like Daniel. Daniel and his other three men, they were separated from uh, Israelites and they were in uh, uh, captivity. But they say, no, we will not eat this good food. Let us eat that food that will not defile us. They separated themselves even if they had the chance. They had the, anything that they could have anything that they wanted, but they, they were separated or they separated themselves. We can see Joseph. Joseph as he was living at his father, maybe we would not see him like the way today we see him. But afterwards, where he has been separated and he was sent to uh, Egypt, that is where Joseph became the real Joseph. These dreams he used to dream, that is where it came out. That is what separation does. You can see that uh, uh, Jacob, Jacob to become uh, Israel, he was separated. He separated himself from his family. He sent his wives and children ahead of him. And he stayed there where he fought with an angel. And the, he asked the angel's name. Or he said to the angel, I will not let you go before you bless me. And the angel asked him, what is your name? And he says, Jacob. Then the angel said to him, from today onwards, you'll be called Israel. That is how the... Is the, the children, uh, that is how Israel became Israel as a land. It is this separation. But if he stayed in this destruction, whatever it was, he couldn't know where he should be. Separation, Moses, he grew up in Pharaoh's house. He had everything. But after he separated, uh, after what he did and he ran away, that is the separation, then he could see God's action where he was just uh, a shepherd somewhere and he could see this bush fire. And God just gave him this um, word, whatever he gave him. But so long as he was mixed up with everything he was doing, God was not speaking to him. But separation caused God to speak to him. Separation is very important for us to know who God really is, to see God's work, to see God's hand in our lives. Separation, it gives power to obtain divine uh, connection. It gives power to be in a position to receive divine approval. Separation is the key yourself into the power of divine encounter. That is what Moses did. He was separated and he could encounter God where he was. Through separation, Jacob was separated from his family, so he encountered this angel. Separation, Abraham was separated from his uh, family he got this blessing. 
that God blessed him. God used to visit him where he was in his tent to, to bring him out and say, come out and see the stars on, uh, in the sky. He was separated from every part of people and he was alone with God. Separation is very important. Separation helps us to reposition our destiny. Separation makes us to have a clear vision of our life and where we are going. Separation makes us to engage in our self-discovery and self-rediscovery. Separation deepens our thoughts. We are no, if we separate ourselves from the world, if we separate ourselves from the things we used to do, then you can see clearly, you can think better, because you, you, not, you have a, 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 the right judgment uh, uh, to the situation to say, okay, it looks like this. But if there's too much noise, you cannot think really. You cannot make the right decision. But if we separate ourselves, then we can make uh, uh, the right decisions. Separation will lead us to a destined transformation. That, that is what happened to Jacob. He, if he was still with his children and his wife and cattle and whatever, so there's no room. There's no room. The angel will not come to fight with him or he will not fight with the angel because there are people who are there. So he would respect whatever form the angel came in. He would just look at the person and say, okay, maybe they will only greet and the angel will go on. But through separation, he had this uh, transformation. Separation make you to have a mandate renewal. Separation will cause you to become a friend of God closely. It is a place you in divine, uh, where you can tap in divine revelation. Jesus said, when you go to pray, go in a room and close the door. That is also separation. That you listen to the word of God. You will not please no one. You will be only you and God uh, speaking to your father. Separation. Uh, God, uh, when God is speaking to us, he takes time to see that we are also listening. But you cannot listen when you are talking, uh, uh, you, are, you are doing many things, everything is uh, going around you. We can say that Noah to build this ark, he had to be somewhere where he could hear exactly what God was telling him. And this, I think God just look for people who are separated, who just say, I want to hear, to understand what God is saying. I want to hear what you are saying. So Noah, he had to build this ark for protection. And where the famine, famine came, was going to come. So God showed Joseph. God showed Joseph how to, uh, to manage the, the, uh, the food which was, uh, uh, which was there. When uh, destruction was coming towards Jesus' parents, so the angel of the Lord came and told the, uh, Joseph had a dream that he has to leave the place and go and hide somewhere. There should be separation so that you can hear the word of God. And you, you and me know exactly where there is uh, what can distract you. Anything that draws you away from Christ, take it as an enemy. Anything that tells you, ah, oh, no, you still have time. I hear that very, uh, very often when you try to tell the person, you need Jesus, Jesus can help you here or there. They say they have time. They will, <laughs> they will decide later. Anything that draws away from Christ should be taken as an enemy. Anything that draws you back to the world, know that it is an enemy. And don't let it or don't allow it. Because if you give it room, it will become big. It will grow, it will get roots. And it is not easy to uproot it because you think it is just part of you or part of me. So separation is very, very important to 
hear the word of God. Separation is very important to renew our vow to God. Separation is very important. David used to do it very often, that he will go and pray. You will read in Psalms where he will just take time. He will sing to God. He will complain. He will cry. There it is where he can do all these things. But if you do it before people, people will say, ah, he's just doing, showing off. But if you go in your room and separate yourself from everything around you and stay there and speak to God, God will speak to you. God will speak to you and he will tell you the way he wants it, the things to go around you. So I pray that the Lord may help us to take a sole decision to cut off ungodly associations, to cut off ungodly friends, to cut off ungodly talks, to cut off ungodly activities, so that we come out of this world, uh, really, uh, really to come out from that destruction and just enter into this revelation, to enter into that area where God wants us to to be or to talk to us. Separate yourself today for God because he said you are a treasure to him. He separated you to be a treasure to him. It is in Deuteronomy 7, 6 that if we obey, we, we know also in the Second Chronicle seven fourteen where it says, if my people that are called by my name leave all what they have been doing, it is that God wishes that we can separate ourselves to hear him talking to us, to get that direction, to know what is right. Is that the right decision or it isn't? So ask God first before we do anything else. Father, we thank you for your love, for your word. Thank you, Father, that you take it as purity that we should separate ourselves from anything that could distract us. Thank you, Father, that you yourself decided to separate us from the world and help us to remain in that area where you have put us. When we run back to destruction, help us to, uh, to give us the knowledge to say, no, that is bad and that is good. Give us the spirit of discernment that we will know exactly where you want us to be. Father, help us also to tap in that divine connection you want us to connect to. And give us people who will always remember us to say, no, they are where you are. It is not where God wants you to be. Father, help us also to make a right decision to say, I don't want to be in the world anymore. I want to be where God wants me to be. Help us really to listen to your word where you want us to, where you want us to send us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>